is it me or why that beat was playing during the announcement? Yes. Um, uh, uh, one single word kept coming to mind. Okay. <laughs> was that just me? I mean, was that, was that just me? Did anybody else hear okay in there? Okay. And now look, if you don't know what that is, you may be a little too old, or maybe I'm a little too old and you're a little too young. I don't know, right? Um, but that's, yeah, just it like, boom. I kept coming to mind. Um, hallelujah. Uh, as you know, today is our conclusion day for our 21-day challenge. We will um, be concluding this segment of it. Uh, but I want you to realize and recognize that this was simply the beginning um, of, a, of a, a vision, a, a step that we're going to be taking now um, until the summertime, most likely throughout the rest of this year. But before I jump into the Word, a couple of uh, very key things that uh, we need to be keeping in prayer. Um, if you have not heard, I apologize for the abruptness of this announcement, but this past week, our dear sister, uh, Miss Adelma, went home to be with the Lord. Um, we have been meeting with Miss Adelma's family, her brother, little sister, and um, uh, walking with her. Uh, it was a very tragic uh, thing. We were not aware. It was literally a sudden. Um, she had been having a couple medical issues. And um, anyway, um, yeah, tragically, we got the word, I believe it was Monday or Tuesday night. Um, we are planning on doing a memorial service, a funeral service. Um, we are nailing that down. It will be over the course of this week, most likely. Uh, if, if it follows as things normally do, then Friday um, there'll be a visitation, most likely at Harrington Funeral Home on uh, Murkerton Road, and then the funeral house here on Saturday with the graveside um, uh, directly following that if you'd like to come out and, and be a part. Again, you'll be kept notified and informed of all of those things. Um, and another thing, uh, Miss Sylvia Hunt continued to keep her lifts, lifted up in prayer. Uh, she's back in UNC Hospital up in uh, Chapel Hill. And um, uh, so, yeah, continue to just keep her keep her lifted up in prayer. Also, Miss Stephanie, I uh, continue to keep her lifted up in prayer. She was in ICU. She's in step down. Um, now, um, continuing to just, you know, fight infection in her body and, and, and things like that. Also, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, announce, you know, we have our yellow ribbon on the back wall. Uh, keep our soldiers lifted up. We've got several men and women who are overseas, um, both serving in our armed forces and also contracting. And we just want to, uh, at, at the time of, you know, unrest uh, in so many places of the world, that we continue to keep those individuals um, lifted up in our prayers and our daily thoughts as we go about our business. Amen? Amen. All right, let's jump on in. As you know, we have been um, kind of walking through uh, the first week of our 21-day challenge was a week of consecration. Uh, so we, we prayed uh, inwardly, Heavenly Father, reveal, deal, sanctify, cleanse, purify me, and wash me. The second week after consecration, we went into preparation. And so our prayer was, Heavenly Father, prepare me for those things that you have for me. And then finally, the last week, this past week, has been the week of application. And you'll notice many of the uh, scriptures this past week, not the daily Bible reading, but the encouraging scriptures on the top, um, were from the book of James. James ever being that go-getter, that one who says, listen, show me your faith without your works. I will show you my faith by my works. And again and again, he encourages us in the area of application. What does that mean? He tells us to, you know, get up off our booties and get some work done. Put your hand to the gospel plow, set yourself uh, to it and get it done. Be that uh, uh, workman who needeth not be ashamed. Get out there in the field and get something done. And so uh, this past week has really been cultivating that. And so, you know, for me personally, this past week has been a week of cultivating not just application in this week, but also application moving from here on out. Uh, but one of the last things I desire is to go through a 21-day challenge and at the conclusion of it on Monday, go back to exactly thing, the way things were 21 days before. Um, and so the question that me and my wife and I have posed to many of you is, okay, now that we're on the conclusion of this thing, what, what, what does it mean? Uh, what are you going to do? Or are you going to simply go back to eating the way that you ate before, doing the things you did before, living the way that you lived before? Now, I'm not saying we've got to maintain or keep the high level of what I'll call consecration, preparation, application um, every day. But, but I, I dare say I don't want to do all the things that I was doing before. 
I don't want to eat all the things I was eating before. And so for me and my wife, we've kind of um, nailed down some, some pretty rigid standards to uh, our eating life, our exercise life, our devotional life, our Bible reading, worship, praise life, all of these things that we've cultivated over the past 21 days. Um, and, and for us, this is not something new. Uh, it's not something that we're just now beginning, but it's something that we often do. We, we step back, reevaluate our walk with the Lord, and we say, hey, um, what areas need to be tightened up? And listen, if you don't do that, I highly recommend you do. Um, it's always important to take a step back and say, um, Heavenly Father, why don't, you, why don't you show me where I need to be consecrated some more? Uh, show me what, what I, where I need to be prepared, where I need to apply some more. Um, because, again, and you hear me make this statement often, um, I don't want to be, uh, I want to be better tomorrow than I am today. And the only way I'm going to do that is through progression, and that's evaluation. Uh, humbling myself, repenting, doing all of those things which we, we sometimes <coughs> don't like to hear the word repentance or forgiveness. Um, but can I tell you, they bring joy to my heart because where would we be without consecration? Where would we be without the opportunity to repent? And so as these things were being cultivated, uh, poor Jackie, I, I tore her out of the office um, and opened up my whiteboard and I was like, all right, we're going to spend the next hour in plan. And like five hours later, eyes bulging and red, you know, okay, ah, you know. Um, when I get in front of the whiteboard with you guys who know me, it's like um, Haran this past week. He, you know, he's like, come in and let's talk about stuff. And I'm like, all right, we're opening the whiteboard, Haran. Let's get it out there. Let's discuss it. Let's cultivate it. Let's, let's stir it up. Because, listen, when you write, there's power when you write something down. You can begin to plan and look at it, articulate it, you know, really view it. And, okay, that's step one, now step two, and step three, and step four. Anyway, had the opportunity to do that, and I uh, am very happy to tell you, um, for us here at Cliffdale, for the course, over the course of the next three, four months, um, we've got a solid, solid plan. Um, not just, uh, and, and I, listen, we've got five-year plans and ten-year plans, um, but you'll never execute the five-year and the ten-year unless you got the one day, the two day, the one week, the two week, the one month. And so this past week, we were able to really solidify some solid things um, when it comes to the vision of Cliffdale. And, you know, one of the, one of the things I'll say is that's, you know, uh, with, with the, 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 I'll say, hardships of hospitality. I, listen, for me, I don't want to just be good. And hospitality is good. I want to be great. I want, I, listen, I want every area, every aspect of our ministry, right? I want it to thrive. I want it to grow. I want us to be excited. And I want us to be fervent. And if we can't be that, we, we need to take a step back and say, okay, hold on just one second. What needs to take place here? And maybe it's not the time for it. And listen, when, when it comes to stuff, whatever it is, a hospitality, men's ministry, whatever, uh, there may, there, there's a time and season for everything. And I'm willing now to look at what is good what, and, what, and go to the place where things will be the best, the best, the best that they can be. And that's what I desire for your life. Listen, you may have uh, things, situations, circumstances in your life that you need to step back and you need to evaluate and you need to say, hey, you know what? Uh, this is good and good is good. But I don't know that it's great. And so one of two things needs to take place, right? Either we need to make that thing go from good to great or we need to say, hey, maybe this isn't that time. And, Oftentimes in the body of Christ, we don't like doing that because we feel like somehow discredited by it, right? My friends, no. Listen, it's so much better to say, hey, let's cut that and, and, and do something else, right? It's, it's so much wiser and has so much more wisdom to say, hey, maybe we just need to set that to the side for right now because this isn't the day or the time or the season for that so that we can focus on something that it is the day or the time or the season for. And can I tell you, um, for me, when I see us being able to reach out and accomplish, and again, talking about Miss Denise and being able to reach people literally around the world, I'm like, yeah, that is great. Yeah. I mean, just being real with you. Yeah. So I have this question I want to just set out before you today, you know, look at what's good and how's it going to become great yeah. in your life. I mean, really. Now, we've talked about consecration. We've talked about preparation. We've talked about application. Uh, but really, I want to talk about going from good to great, not to coin some leadership book. But with that being said, let's go ahead and turn in our Bibles to the book of dun, 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 Ezekiel. <laughs> yeah. Ezekiel, y'all. Woo! Some of y'all in here who know the book of Ezekiel, you're like, whoa, Pastor. We're going to start talking about the wheel within a wheel and the eyes and yeah. them spinning and the angels and... We're going to start talking about them valleys of dry bones and 
No, we're going to go to the other one, y'all. We're going to go to uh, the water, the river coming from the throne. So turn to Ezekiel chapter 47. <laughs> and just to reiterate a couple of points that we've talked about over the past couple of weeks as you're turning to Ezekiel chapter 47. Um, the principles of preparation uh, we went over a couple weeks ago. You've got to ignore the naysayers and uh, brace past mistakes and learn from those. Um, build on our strengths and our weaknesses and then take your time. Not just meaning do things slowly, but take back your time. It's, pre it's a precious thing. We talked about over the past two weeks uh, developing the core. Uh, our core being our core pursuit, our core purpose. Developing number two, our core values and our core standards. And number three, developing our core strength, our core actions. And as we continue to cultivate these things, um, this story in Ezekiel chapter 47 just uh, began to reverberate on the inside of me. And uh, let's begin in verse 1 of uh, Ezekiel 47. It says this, it says, Then he brought me to the back door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. For the front of the temple faced east, and the water was flowing under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside of the outer gate the way, uh, our way that faces east. And there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with a line in his hand, he measured out 1,000 cubits, or about 3,000 feet, ladies and gentlemen. And he brought me through the water, and the water came up to my ankles. And again, he measured out 1,000 cubits and brought me out in the waters, and it was up to my knees. And again, he measured out 1,000. He brought me through and the waters was up to my waist, and again he measured out 1,000, and the river, um, and it was a river I could not cross, for the water was too deep, water which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. And he said to, uh, said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me, and he returned to the bank of the river. When I returned there along the river bank were many trees on either side, when he, then he said unto me, The water flows toward the eastern region. And he goes down into the valley and it enters the sea. Pay attention, church. When it reaches the seas, it waters, their waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live. There will be very great multitude of fish because the waters go there. For they will be healed and everything will live there everywhere that the river goes, and it shall be that fishermen will stand from the En Gedi to En Gila. And uh, that will be the places of the spreading of nets. Their fish will be the same kinds of the great sea, exceedingly many, but the swamps and the marshes shall not be healed. And they will be given over to salt. Along the banks of the river, on the side, on this side and that, will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither, and their fruit will not fail. They will bear every kind of fruit in its month, because the water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be food, and their leaves will be medicine. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as we delve into this discussion today, God, I pray that you would cause our eyes to be open to where we can consecrate, prepare, where we can apply. Heavenly Father, cause our eyes to be open to see our pursuit, our purpose, Father, not just our pursuit, our, our, our purpose, but Father, um, our values, our principles that we hold dear, and God calls us to be able to apply those things with strength and action, Father, every day, everywhere, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, I have preached this portion of scripture several times in my life, and um, often when I have preached it, I have preached it from the aspect that uh, we in the body of Christ, we are Ezekiel who God is drawing out, right, to the deeper waters. And he, he desires that his people would go from that water that is ankle deep to the water that is knee deep. Then he desires that we would go further out from the water that is knee deep to the water that is waist deep. And finally, that we would grow and go and go so far that the water that is waist deep would go up over our head and would just completely wash over us. I'm not sure if you remember, but last year I preached a sermon that talked about the body of Christ being uh, from the perspective of not just being Ezekiel, you'll, some will remember, but us being the angel. Calling others out, right? Saying, hey, you need to come out deeper into God. And I believe that we as the body of Christ, we are called to call those who are in the shallow waters to go deeper. 
uh, to go deeper up to their ankles, up to their knees, up to their waist, and, and draw them out ever so far as being over their head. And I don't know how it never struck me before. It's hurt! As I, like, I've read this more times than I can count. But have we ever considered, and maybe you have, and you're more spiritually inclined than me, and if so, that's cool. But me, sometimes it just takes me reading something over and over and over and over and over again until finally there is a, a, a mild epiphany and God says, look at it from this perspective. And I'm like, ah! I never thought of that. Anybody ever had that? Yeah. Okay, no. If you haven't, then I recommend reading your Bible on a daily basis because trust me, if you read it on a daily basis, it'll happen. So, as I was reading, it was as though I heard the Spirit of God, right, deep inside of me whisper this question. And he whispered the question, who are my temples? And I said, wait a minute, Holy Spirit. The New Testament says, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. A countless times throughout the New Testament, Peter, the chosen generation, that we are that royal priesthood, right? That we are those stones that God has built up to be the body of Christ. So if I, 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 the Lord just said, who? Okay. So then, my son, do you consider yourself to be Ezekiel, who is walking further out in the water? Do you consider yourself to be that, 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 that mouthpiece of God drawing others deeper into me? Or perhaps it's time for you to consider yourself not to be the Ezekiel, Perhaps not to even be the mouthpiece of God drawing others out. Perhaps it's time for you to consider yourself to be my temple from which my waters flow. Because why? Because I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Maybe you don't know about this river of life, but it makes the lamb to walk. Anybody know it? And the blind to the sea hey, opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. So what? Spring up for oh well within my soul. Spring up for oh well and make me whole. Oh, oh, spring up for oh well and give to me he that's my life abundantly. My friends. We, as the people of God, are called to be his temple and his tabernacle. To have his rivers of life that flow out of us. And everywhere the river of life flows out of us, it brings life to those who are around us. And those who are around us have the opportunity to experience the life uh, ankle deep and then they have the opportunity to experience a life knee deep and some may experience a life waist deep and some might jump fully into it and I can tell you that in this body here today there were those during praise and worship who experienced the glory of God ankle deep and you were like whoo feels good on my tootsies I love it and you were wiggling your toes in the water and you're like oh it feels so nice right and others of you, you were like, you know, that's good, but I'm going to go just a little bit deeper. And you went up to your knees and you're like, ah, refreshing. And then there are those who said, you know what, I'm not satisfied with remaining knee deep. But during this time of praise and worship, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get wasty. And then some of y'all said, forget about it, baby. I'm diving in to the deep end. Look out, cannonball, right? Anybody ever do that as a kid? Y'all yeah. seem tired today. I mean, I'm preaching really hard, right? And y'all just like, mm. did y'all get one out here praise and worship? You, you done finished, right? You're like, all right, it's time for my nap. I done. I gave it all to Jesus. I got nothing left. I'm, whoo, I am undone as Isaiah was in the presence of God, right? Well, wake up. Because we got a ways to go still, and we're not quite there yet. So there are those who went ankle knee, waist deep, and there are those who just dove on in and got to experience a full, great measure of the power of God. And listen, this is not a word of criticism to any of the above. At least you get in the water, right? Because it's better to get in the water than it is to stand outside. I always want to be one who gets 
in the water, and we see the effects of those, um, the, the, well, I'll say the fishes and the creatures. And Listen, wherever this river went, it brought life. It caused things to, to come alive. And I'm not sure about you, but let me just speak for a moment into my life and your life. There are items in your life and my life that need a little bit more life. There are, there are items, and there are, there, are, there are sorrows, there is anguish, there is pain. There are things on the inside of me, there are things on the inside of you that need a little bit more of God's life to cause them to come alive. And so every time I have the opportunity to dive into the deep, and every time I have the opportunity to allow those river of life to come flowing out of me, that make the lame to walk, that make the blind to see, listen, I want to seize every one of those opportunities. And there are, listen, ah. There are those in the body of Christ, some desire to jump in, some desire to stand on the bank. Mm -hmm. mm. And those who jump in the water, you're like, yes, this is so good. Jump in with me. And often those who stand on the bank, you know what they do? They stand on the bank and they say, mm, you jumped in the water all along. You should have seen yourself. You look so foolish. When you was up there dancing and doing whatever that was you was doing. You know, blowing, blowing that horn thing that you were blowing. What was that about? I'm, I'm just being real with you, right? Oftentimes, those individuals who sit inside the boat and don't get out and walk on the water are those who criticize those who do. Peter, what made you think you were going to walk on water, son? That was foolish. Silliness, boy. Get back in the boat. You should have known better than to try that foolishness. My friends, listen. Don't listen to the naysayers. Amen. Because the naysayers will want you to stay in the boat. You want to know why they want you to stay in the boat? Because they want to justify those who stay in the boat. Are you with me? They want to justify their position because it's the wiser position of staying in the boat. My friends, I don't want to be that one who stays in the boat. Every time I want to get out. I want to try. I want to go. I want to do. I desire for those rivers of living water to come bursting out of me. But if this is going to transpire, if I'm going to be that temple from which the river flows and listen to the life that it brings, man, it causes the salt waters to come alive. It is teeming with life, and there are trees on its banks, and those trees bring forth leaves, and those leaves are uh, and fruit are for the healing of the nation. So people are affected and infected and touched by everywhere this river, everywhere this spring flows. Individuals are affected by life from God Most High. That's what I desire to take place. But there's things that need to transpire in order for that to take place. Let me give you an example. I cannot remain on the bank and jump in the water at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay? And oftentimes, those who remain on the bank are critical of those who jump in the water. Whereas those who jump in the water are like, hey, watch this! Woohoo! Right? I remember a few months back, last year, uh, I went to Austin, Texas. And the Colorado River, I believe it is, flows through Austin. A great friend of mine, Trini Boss, we went down to where the Colorado River flows down, and um, we were crossing this bridge over the Colorado River, and um, some kids, about 10 years old, 12, were jumping off the bridge into the water, and those of you who know a little bit about your pastor's past, know that growing up in the little town of Wikiwachi, Florida, which is where the mermaids are born, just so you know, if you don't think they're real, they actually have shows at 2 and 5 every day of the week. Okay? Okay. So, uh, and we would jump off these trees high and bridge and also anything. Look, if, you, if it was possible to jump off of it, no matter where it was, what it was, we jumped off of it. And so these kids were jumping, jumping, and they're like, I mean, I don't know why I got to be like this. Hey, old man. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I was at a pastor's meeting doing a round table when somebody called me a senior citizen yesterday. <laughs> Y'all don't let the gray beard get to you. I'm just telling you, right? No, it was the holy thing. You wasn't senior, it was senior saint. Anyway, so these kids are like, hey, old man. 
I dare you to jump. And now look, you can tell my eldest son is his father's son because he was like, what? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Ah! Right? Yeah. <laughs> and me, because I'm a little bit wiser and smarter, I got up and stood on the railing, right? And it's the railing, the bridge, and then water. Took my pose. You can hear angelic voices. Oh. Swan dive. And I do this perfect, well, I wish I could say perfect. Anyway, so go into the water, and we do it a couple more times. We climb up, and we jump, we climb up, and we jump. And then Trini, who is um, on the other side of the bridge, said, Josh, before you cross the bridge, if you want to jump anymore, you got to do it now. Because once you cross the bridge, you're held accountable. Okay, cool deal. And um, so anyway, I crossed the bridge, and then there was a sign saying, those who jump off the bridge will be held prosecuted in court. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, y'all, this is the grace of God because it's not by any wisdom on your pastor's part. Like five minutes later, a police patrol boat comes looking. Look, look, me and all my 12 year old buddies, right? We're like, Woo! <laughs> but I'd rather always be that individual who jumps off into the deep end than that who stands on a bridge. And my friends, God has called us to be his fountains of life, his springs, his sources to those who are all around. And you see, this is the kicker about it, because we are going to uh, spring forth with something. There will be something that springs forth out of us. And as we evaluate, you see, we can look at that which is springing forth out of us, and we can know whether it brings life or death. Whether it is beautiful, refreshing, clear, cool, spring water, or it's, well, sewage? I mean, I'm just being real. Okay, and you can know this. What comes in is based, or what goes out is based on what comes in. And so if I look at my life and I see that all I'm spilling out is sewage and garbage and trash, nastiness, right? then I need to look at what is coming into me because I can know that if that is what is going out, then that is what is coming in. And if that's not what I want to go out, then I need to reevaluate and say, hey, stop coming in. I want good things to come in so good things go out. My friends, it's not real rocket science. If you are not satisfied with your attitude or your, the way you are, the way that you talk or the way that you talk or the things that you do, listen, the situation you're currently in, though you may think that that is the reason for your negative attitude, it really has nothing to do with your negative attitude. I'm just going to be real with you for a second. The reason you are the way that you are is not because of the situation and the circumstance you're in. The reason you are the way that you are is because of what you allow to come into you. Because if what you allow to come into you is good, then what will flow out of you is good, no matter the circumstance or the situation. Now, I'm not saying that the enemy doesn't come in, that circumstances don't arise, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, if enough good comes in, then good is what's going to come out. And so if bad is coming out, then I need to not try to change my situation. I need to try to change what's coming in. Because as I change what's coming in, that will affect what's going on. <coughs> and I want to be that, that, that temple, that tabernacle that the rivers of life flow out of. That being said, how do I cause... That which flows out of me to be good. Well, I change that which comes in. And this begins basically the three-part process that we began talking about on Wednesday. Um, and that three-part process, number one, has to do with my purpose. It has to do with my pursuit. What, what am I aiming for? What is my goal? You see, if my goal is uh, to become rich, to become famous, uh, uh, whatever. I mean, you name it, right? To become popular, um, to be a TV actor, to be, you know, Thor in the next Marvel's movie, whatever, whatever. Uh, Y'all don't think I got the body for it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm going to keep preaching because y'all be mean today. Hallelujah. No? I figured I'd try. So if, I, if I'm, I've got to be aimed towards the right thing, and so that's got to be the thing I am pursuing, that's got to be my purpose. Um, and so if that, if that pursuit, if that purpose is anything other than Jesus Christ, anything, 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 
then what will flow out of me will be based on what flows into me. And Jesus is the only place that life comes from. Okay? He's the only place that goodness comes from, grace comes from, mercy, love, all of these things. As a matter of fact, if my purpose and my plan is my wife, that can sound noble and can sound good. But if my wife takes the place of my God, then there's something messed up and there's something missing. And what flows out is not going to be good. Uh, my family, that can sound noble, that can sound good. My career, my business opportunities, the ability to make money. If all of those, any, 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 any of those things take the place, if they are my ultimate purpose, if they are my ultimate pursuit, then what comes in will end up being negative because it will be infected by sin, whatever the case is, right? Whether it's my relationship with my wife, my kids, if any of those things become my God, then what I'm aiming at is tainted and will ultimately turn tainted. But if my pursuit, if my purpose is aimed towards, I mean, didn't we read it this past Wednesday, right? Matthew, Jesus says, who do men say that I am? Well, you know, some say you're Elijah. Uh, some say you're Isaiah, you're one of the prophets. And then he says, but who do you say that I am? You are Christ. You are the son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Because, listen, this is not a flesh and blood sort of thing. This is a purpose. This is a pursuit kind of thing. And on this truth, on the reality of who I am, I am going to build my church upon that truth. And the gates of hell will not be able to stand against it. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven, my friends. That is the target. That is the goal. Everything, 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 everything else takes second place to Jesus Christ. Anytime we allow anything to take first place over Jesus, that is the wrong choice. That is the wrong decision and will only lead to death because it's tainted by sin. I hope you're following me today. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. One of my favorite, favorite portions of scripture. It says this in Hebrews 12, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that has been set before us, doing what? Looking unto our spouse no looking unto our job no looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our the beginning and the end of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of god my friends jesus is the center. He is the target. He is the goal. He is the one that we, he is that one that we are in pursuit of. He is the one where we find our purpose in anything and everything outside of him and his kingdom. Listen, it may bring you temporary joy. It may bring you temporary peace. It may fill some of the lusts of your heart. But at the end of the day, it will not truly satisfy or bring peace or bring joy into your life. That is why it is necessary that we keep the main thing, the main thing. That is why we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. That is why we run the race that has been set before us. Paul writes to the church at Philippi, not that I have already obtained, nor that I have arrived at my goal, but I press on to take that, to take hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of me. I do not consider myself having yet taken hold of it, but this one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind, and I strain toward that which is ahead. I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press, I push, I strain to keep Jesus Christ my purpose, to be in pursuit of him. He writes his spiritual son, Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses to the church at Corinth. He writes, therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, and I fight thus, not as one who beats the air, 
But I discipline my body and I bring it under subjection, lest when I have preached it to others, I myself would be disqualified. My friends, I want us to be those who run the race that is set forth before us. I don't desire that we would be those who simply beat at the air and beat at the air. When you were a little kid, anybody ever grab you by the head, hold you back as you just beat at the air and you swung, accomplishing nothing? Ah! You could be mad and you could be angry and you could be pushing and you could be fighting and you could be trying, but you weren't accomplishing any, 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 any. Thing. My friends, I do not desire that we would be those who beat the air. I desire that we would be able to take up our position and say, look, I've got my stand. Jesus is my goal. That is the place where I'm heading. Anything, anything that wants to hold me back better look out because we're going down. The, we, listen, we're going to do this. I will fight and I will fight and I will press and I will push. Listen. I'll fight dirty and nasty because if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, I'll try to bite your ear off. Look out, Evander Holyfield. I'm just being real with you. I'm going to do all that I can. Some of y'all don't remember that, do you? Mike Tyson. Arr, arr, right? Just took hold of that ear, man. Yeah. Woo, boy, my ear still hurts. But anything that tries to get in my way, I'm going to do all that I can do that I can do that I can do to get that thing out of my way because nothing is going to stand between me and my Jesus. I'm going to run with all I've got. I'm going to push with all my might and I'm not going to stop, not going to stop, not going to stop until I reach the goal, until I take hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of me. Listen, this world would want to lie to you. It would want to tell you, you need to run that way and you need to run that way and you need to go that way and you need to seek that thing and it will have you all turned around and going around and spinning round and round until you're dizzy. You can't even see straight, let alone walk straight. I don't know. Which way should I go? Which way should I go? What should I do? Listen. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. He is the only one. He is the only answer. He is our pursuit, and he is the purpose. Anything else is less than the best. And he created you for the best. Mm -hmm. That is who we pursue. That is where we find our purpose. But it's not enough that we simply aim at him. Because for some of us, he may be a long way off. It may seem like we got a ways to go until we can get to him, so we got to say, hey, in my life, there may be things that I need to cut loose so that I can run towards him. There may be some sin I need to get rid of. There may be some habits and some addictions I need to cut loose. And there may be some people I need to just say, amen. I'm not saying you said you didn't love them. What I'm saying is there may be some people in your life you need to step away from, make a little bit of distance between so you can make a little bit more distance for you and God. Okay? Right. Prepare a little place because maybe there's people in your life that are keeping you from Him. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take it a step further just because I feel that in function, right? You may say, but Pastor Josh, that person doesn't necessarily keep me away from the Lord. I will tell you this. If that person keeps you sinning, Okay. Right? If you when when you get around that person, suddenly you hear the call of the wicked one. Right? Okay. You know, some people you just get around, like there's certain people I get around, and when I get around them, we start talking about food, right? And then we just be like, oh, uh, uh, right? And there's certain people it's like, I know as soon as I get around you, it's just gonna be like, let me tell you about this thing. I had this steak, right? Huh. I ate this, you know. Listen, there are certain people you go, you, you get around, and as soon as you get around them, you want to relive some things that you used to do. Okay, I'm going to take it a little deeper, just because you, you, you're not apparently picking up what I'm laying down. There are certain people that perhaps you did things with in the past, okay, that when you get around them, you want to do those things. And these things can be uh, addictions. I mean, listen, I don't care. It could be smoking, drinking, drugs, your language. You ever notice when you get around certain people, right, your language suddenly changes? My wife notices this is about me. That when I'm, when I'm around certain people, the way I begin to portray myself and discuss things <laughs> changes. I can be hanging with my boys in the heights, right? Yo, fellas, what's up? 
How y'all doing? And then I'm hanging with the mayor. Hello, sir. It's good to see you. I call this the white me and the black me. I know some of you that may offend. I was raised in Haiti. And I'm just being real with you. I was raised around more black people than any of y'all was. You think you know the ghetto? Trust me. You don't know nothing. No. I'm just being real. That's reality. Everybody, ain't nobody coming back to church to this week. I love you. That pastor's racist. He's a white man standing up there talking about. All right. But reality is, when we are around certain things, it will alter and change the way that we act. Certain people have the ability to bring out the sinner in us. There are certain people that bring out the addiction and the lust, the desires. So what I'm saying to you today, my friends, is if you have people in your life that are bringing the worst out of you, then the best thing you can do is offer a little bit of separation and give God a little bit more room. I know that just stepped on a whole bunch of toes. But it is the truth, and I love you, and I don't mean to offend you. But the things I'm saying are for your well-being, and there's some people that maybe you just need to... Amen? So that we can aim at the purpose, so that we can aim our pursuit at our Heavenly Father. And the very next thing, after we begin to aim this purpose and aim this pursuit at our Heavenly Father, go ahead and turn with me real quick, and I'm going to be wrapping up here in just one second. I'm looking for the scripture. I got it here somewhere. We talked about fighting the good fight of faith. Not that I've already attained, but we run this race that has been said before us. We discipline ourselves. The next thing is, is we got to begin to establish values in our life. Turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And as we begin to establish, listen, when I begin to talk about standards and I talk about values, um, understand what I'm referring to and what I'm talking about is basically a list of to-dos, a list of things that we count as worthy, right? Those things that we find value, I know for 2 Corinthians, it's somewhere in my Bible, y'all. Hallelujah. What I tell y'all, 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians? First. Chapter what? Yeah. Amen. Y'all, y'all need to pay such good attention. I love this. Hallelujah. So I'm in a place where I want to have the river of God flowing out of me, right? That is my desire. That is my want. So I've got to allow that which comes in to begin to flow out. So that I've got, in order for that to take place, I've got to aim at the pursuit. I've got to aim at the purpose, right? After I aim at the pursuit, I aim at the purpose. I've got to begin to make a plan. What do I hold value? What things do I value and how am I going to act? How am I going to respond? And stay there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as we kind of walk through this. So here I am, I decide, this is my purpose, this is my plan, and now these are the steps I need to take in order to get from A to B. In order to get from the place where I am to the next place, these are the steps, and basically, listen, what these steps are established upon is what you hold value. What you value, what in your life has worth, okay? So I fix my eyes on Jesus, right? That's point number one. Point number two is everything that holds value, whether my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids, or uh, they are, th those, each and everything is influenced by my relationship with him. He is number one. Everything else is number two. This is what's called uh, uh, going for the kingdom. And, and keeping a kingdom first. Thy kingdom come, O God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is keeping the main thing, the main thing, and then allowing everything else to be influenced by the main thing through you. Are you following me? See, because as I have Jesus as the main thing, Jesus flows in. It affects my relationship with my wife. It affects my relationship with my children. It affects my relationship with my friends, with my staff, all of these things. But if Jesus isn't affecting me, then you can know Jesus. If Jesus ain't coming in, Jesus ain't going out. Okay? And so if he, what I need to do is I need to make a plan. Okay, Jesus... You are that which I value the most. Okay? So I want to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. Moses writes by the voice of God, the Lord your God is one God. So love him in the book of Deuteronomy with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Jesus in the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, 
All three says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Love him with everything and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. My friends, we need to begin to establish a love for our Heavenly Father that contains all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. Listen, I'll put it to you like this. When I praise, I want to praise passionately. I don't want to just... Oh, spirit almost got me there. I don't know which spirit it was, though, right? No, I want to be an individual who prays, and my prays are passionate. I want my worship to be intimate. Man, I want to feel God just, whoop, hey, all over. And if you don't know what that's like, I'm sorry, but it's good, right? I want to be an individual that when I pray, I pray with purpose. I don't want to just, uh, as Jesus said, uh, vainly say this thing through vain repetition. No, I want to pray prayers of purpose. God, I am communicating with you. You are so good. You are so great. And Father, I desire to see your kingdom come and your goodness. God, I just want to communicate. Hang out. I want to praise you passionately. And Heavenly Father, I want to worship you intimately. Father, I want all of these things to be cultivated and all stirred up on the inside. But I don't want to simply allow that love to stop with me because I realize that I can't love them until I receive your love. Okay? I cannot love them properly until I learn how to love the way that you love because my kind of love for them will say, you know, I love you, but do you really love me? Because I see the way you treat me and talk about me sometimes. And God, that's the way I'm going to love them. And I don't want to love them like that because I want to love them the way that you love them. The love that never stops and never quits, it never ends. That's what Corinthians says, chapter 13. Father, I don't want to be boastful, and I don't want to be puffed up, and I, I don't want to have a, a limited kind of love. But Father, teach me to love how you love so that I might love them the way that you love them. Amen. The kind of love wherewith you would love the whole world and give your only begotten Son, Heavenly Father. That's the way. Listen, if we are going to love each other the way that we need to be loved, we've got <laughs> to love with an unlimited kind of love. Amen. I know you, and I love you, and no other kind of love will work. Are you with me today? Okay. You need an unlimited kind of love. But guess what? So do I. Why? Because we mess up. We make mistakes. We falter. We fail. I'm not saying that those mistakes are okay. But what I'm saying to you is those kind of mistakes, they need a never-ending kind of love. And the only place to obtain that never-ending kind of love is from our Heavenly Father. So I need to love him with all that I've got, receive his love, and then pour his love upon all those who are uh, around me. Now, keep in mind, once again, right, the river flowing from the temple. If it's diluted, if it's polluted, if it's got the garbage, if it's got the trash, listen, it's because it's not tapped into the main thing, keeping the main source the main source. But if it is tapped in, eventually, I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, but eventually, this love will get rid of all the impurities, all the garbage, all of the trash, until what's flowing out is good and pure and holy. And understand this, my friends, and I'm closing with this. I promise. I'm done. Here's the deal. Right? I set the purpose, the target, the goal. That is what I pursue. That's what I run after. I hope I've pushed that enough today. Number two is I set that as my purpose. I establish values. I, I establish standards. Listen, the actions that are, I take are based on what I'm running after. So first I set my goal as Jesus Christ in every action, every value, every standard, everything that I consider to be worthwhile is done inside of Jesus. And I realize that I love you not with my love, but with his love. And that's the kind of love we need to be giving to one another. But I also realize that what I've talked about so far is in here and in here, but not out there. Okay? And so not only do I need to have this right and this right, but I also have to understand that once we begin to love one another with that kind of God quality of love, right? Now listen, I'm not talking gooey, gooey, mushy, gushy, because sometimes the best kind of love each one of us can receive is the truth kind of love. Amen. Which says, hey, you slip and trip and we need to do something about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Listen, I never desire that any, any individual be afraid to come to me and say, hey, pastor. Because I can tell you this. There are times in my life when I need somebody to say, hey, pastor. Okay? I never want to be that person that's in fear of feedback. In fear of, of somebody. Listen, you're not going you're, you're to break my toes if you step on them. Trust me, I'm, I, I will be okay. And you know what? So will you. As a matter of fact, we need to have that kind of love that we're willing to trust one another enough to say, hey, I may not agree with you. 
But that's all right. Mm -hmm. I still desire to have that kind of love where we can speak honestly with one another and cultivate the good things that God desires to stir up. But listen, it's not enough because once, okay, 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 and I'm done. <laughs> once we stir it up in here, right, we have this, this synergy that begins to take place. I explained it like this on Wednesday. It becomes like a bunch of atoms in an atom bomb that are just getting stirred up and stirred up. And I mean, the nucleus is right? And the electric and craziness is just happening. And then what takes place is just a spiritual atomic bomb that shines light from here to everywhere the darkness is. Everywhere we go, every person we see, everyone we talk to, everyone we influence, is infected by what you have received in here, which is infected by what he has poured into us. So if we ever hope to have what they need, we gotta have what we need. And if we ever hope to have what we need, we gotta have what he's pouring out. Receive it, take it in, drink it, walk in it, live it, and let it flow out from us. Heavenly Father.